Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In recent years, combat drones have transformed the battlefield, emerging as one of the most significant threats in modern warfare. Unlike traditional aircraft, drones are smaller, harder to detect, and much cheaper to deploy, making them accessible not only to major militaries, but also to irregular forces and non-state actors. The threat is not limited to the battlefield. Drones can also be used to target critical infrastructure, command centers, or even civilian populations, raising concerns about asymmetric warfare and terrorism. In response, militaries worldwide are racing to develop counter-drone technologies, including electronic jamming, directed energy weapons, and specialized interceptors. We often see that on TVs where uh, you got a prime minister or an important person doing a speech and you see a small drone flying around. So you don't know if it's a really a threat or it's just someone who wants to take a picture, but uh, you always have to assume it could be a threat. The threats that uh, the military are facing is uh, either the drone is dropping an explosive or they're using the drones for a surveillance system. So you want to detect them before they actually see you. Still, the cat and mouse struggle between drones and defenses continues to evolve, underscoring the drone's role as both a powerful asset and a growing global threat. To counter these threats, the US is investing in a wide range of technologies. Electronic warfare systems can jam drone communications, forcing them to lose control or return to base. Directed energy weapons, such as high-powered lasers and microwave systems, are being fielded to disable drones at the speed of light, providing a cost-effective alternative to expensive missiles. Most of the time we, we actually hit that and it actually burns a hole, a kinetic effect where it actually drops it out of the sky because of that burned hole. With high powered microwave, it may be a little different. It may just interrupt the actual performance and the, the weapon system will have to go back to where it came from and it loses that autopilot and it drops to the ground. The Army, Air Force and Navy are also deploying kinetic interceptors designed to destroy drones before they reach their targets. Additionally, mobile counter-drone units are being tested to provide frontline troops with fast, portable protection. The Thor Counter Swarm Microwave System is a directed energy defense designed to defeat swarms of small, unmanned aerial vehicles. When sensors identify an incoming group, operators lock the beam onto the most threatening cluster. The microwave pulse floods electronics with disruptive energy, overheating circuits and corrupting guidance and communication systems. Military drone history is one of constant invention and strategic inventiveness. The trip started during World War I with the development of the Kettering Bug, an early effort at an unmanned bomb. It established the basis for later advancements, even if it never entered combat. With the MQ-1 Predator, which combines surveillance and precision strike capability and was heavily utilized in Afghanistan and Iraq, Drone technology advanced dramatically in the 1990s. Especially, the MQ-9 Reaper, the successor of the Predator, 
built on these features and became a major apparatus for U.S. military operations. With its unmatched surveillance capabilities, military drones like the RQ-4 Global Hawk and the X-47B characterize modern warfare technology today. As aircraft grew faster and flew higher from the 1930s onward, militaries turned to remotely controlled target drones, low-cost, realistic flying targets to train air defense crews for the modern battlefield. Target drones must fly at realistic speeds and altitudes and be as cheap as possible. One way to keep costs down is to abandon landing gear systems. Modern aircraft are also usually jet aircraft. So a jet-propelled target drone, such as the BQM-167 Skeeter, is utilized for air defense training. To cut down costs, the Skeeter is launched from a ramp with a launch booster motor, which falls away, and the drone continues under the power of its own turbojet. In flight, the Skeeter is controlled from the ground to execute the desired flight profiles for effective air defense training. To protect against low-flying aircraft, the FIM-92 Stinger Infrared Homing Surface-to-Air Missile went into service in 1967. It turned out to be a very effective man-portable air defense system against various aircraft, especially helicopters. A good example is how it was used by the Mujahedin in Afghanistan against Russian Mi-24 attack helicopters. In the U.S. Marine Corps, the value of the Stinger is recognized, and low-altitude air defense battalions are trained to utilize the weapon against aircraft as well as drones. MQM-170 outlaw drones are launched for a live firing exercise. Targets can be targeted at up to six miles and engage for interception at about three miles. More advanced target drones also exist. Systems like the QF-4 were basically F-4 Phantoms that had been turned into remote-controlled aircraft. Mostly employed as a full-scale aerial target, the QF-4 was a modified form of the F-4 Phantom II used in testing and training. Conducting live fire drills and assessing the efficacy of new weapon systems was its main purpose while operated remotely. For pilots and missile systems, the QF-4 offered a reasonable target that increased tactical proficiency and battle preparedness. It gave the aging aircraft a new use instead of simply sending them to the boneyard. In 2016, the QF-4 was retired as a target drone. To 
replace the QF-4, the U.S. Air Force turned to older F-16 Fighting Falcons and began turning them into remote control units known as the QF-16. Instead of letting these aircraft serve no purpose, at least 210 of them were earmarked to become target drones. Maintenance and regeneration personnel at Davis Monthan Air Force Base remove unnecessary manned systems and replace them with advanced remote control systems. Because the F-16 is a faster and nimbler fighter than the F-4, it makes better targets for modern air defense systems. To utilize the QF-16, a trained F-16 pilot does all pre-flight checks and lines the aircraft up at the start of the runway. Control is relinquished to a member of an aerial target squadron who takes control of the aircraft remotely. From that point, the aircraft is powered up and races down the runway until it reaches takeoff speed and takes off. Once airborne, the landing gear is retracted and the operator is free to perform the mission. QF-16s are painted with a bright orange scheme to distinguish them from manned aircraft visually. Beyond platforms like the QF-16, other physical or kinetic solutions include drones armed with nets to catch enemy drones mid-air and bring them down by tangling up in their systems and making them heavier. Once caught, the drone becomes unstable and crashes. The interceptor can pull it to a safe place. This approach is good for sensitive locations or metropolitan surroundings, since it reduces collateral risk and damage. NATO can efficiently neutralize drones by deploying nets, therefore offering a precision option in their aerial defense tool instead of more forceful action. One of the most used systems is drone radio frequency jammers. By jamming their radio transmissions, the handheld counter UAS Battel Drone Defender disturbs the command and control links of drones. Hey, you drone? The Drone Defender drives the drone to go into a fail-safe mode, that of landing or returning to its operator, by sending an electromagnetic pulse. Huh? Designed for simple mobility, the device has a 400-meter range of about 1,300 feet making it a flexible tool for military operations and security. Raytheon has tested an anti-UAS missile system called the Coyote using two different radar systems, the KU-RFS Precision Targeting Radar and the KU-720 Mobile Sensing Radar. Tests were mostly successful, with the missile detecting its targets and detonating a warhead that spreads out shrapnel to defeat multiple threats. Even with successful systems targeting single drones, drone swarms present a greater menace.
Not only does its defense have to be effective, but also as cheap as possible. Drones have reshaped the modern battlefield, forcing militaries to innovate at a rapid pace. Systems like the Thor high-powered microwave weapon demonstrate how the U.S. is adapting to neutralize swarms quickly and effectively without relying solely on costly missiles. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.